Hey, what's up YouTube? Well, we got another video about air conditioning on these mid-90s Chevrolet vehicles. Um, a couple years ago, I did a video about your AC freezing up, check that. That is your AC cycling switch. Some people call it a low pressure switch, which essentially it is a low pressure switch. But it's meant to cycle your compressor on and off to keep your evaporator core from freezing. Well, I've had another issue now. I couldn't really find any help online in forums. People actually didn't really know what the cause of the problem was. So a lot of people I saw, they just said they'll, they ended up putting a toggle switch on their dash, just hot wired the compressor bypassed all the computer stuff and I mean yeah you can do that but I'd rather have something work the way it's intended to work and I believe it's from 96 to like you know past 2000 a little bit GM had this same type of setup now I believe like 95 and earlier it was mechanically operated through the switches and stuff but there wasn't any computer involvement. But 96 up, the computer is what actually turns this compressor on and off. It gets some signals from the low set, the low cycle switch over there. There's a high pressure switch up here. There's another high pressure switch on the back of the compressor. And through all those, it turns the AC compressor on and off. It also turns it off for other things like wide open throttle events and things like that. Or if the temperature outside is too cold below a certain point, it won't turn on the AC compressor. I mean, obviously you don't need AC if it's 20 degrees outside, um, but that is controlled through the computer. So, like I said, that switch over there, you just saw it cycle. That's the evaporator switch, okay? So right now it's in the closed position, it just opened. You saw the AC relay turned off. That's the computer turning the relay on and off. So my problem that I had was I had the AC on. Okay, the light was on on the button, but nothing was happening. Now, two years ago, I had to replace that control unit. And them things are not cheap, by the way. Uh, a GM Genuine AC Delco is almost $200 for that thing. But what, what happened to my old one was I pushed the button, the light wouldn't come on, and I checked and there was power coming in, nothing going out. So I determined that the AC button itself had gone bad. But now this one, you can see the light was on, the compressor wouldn't come on. Well, it's a pretty simple circuit. You can see that this circuit right here gets hot, gets power in the run position. All right, it comes in what they call it at GM is the compressor control logic, but, you know, it's just that, that control right there. So we come down, so when you push the AC button, it's going to light up this LED, and it's going to come out. First thing it's going to hit is this AC compressor high side cutout switch. Now that switch in particular, right here, says it's on the rear of the AC compressor. Now the other one, they actually call it a low pressure cutout switch. This one that's on the high side, right? This one right here you would think is your high side switch, but no, all that is is a computer signal. That's a computer signal, that's a computer signal over there. And by computer signal, I mean just, you know, it's, it's a, I believe 12 volt, reference going to ground being pulled to ground that's the computer signal but that switch in the back of the compressor actually cuts the signal before it even gets to the computer so if that high side pressure switch is bad or tripped it doesn't matter how much you push that button the signal is never going to make it to the computer to come on and that's what my scan tool showed with the button pushed AC request said no so as far as the computer was concerned the button wasn't even on okay 
So now what I did was I put a set of gauges on here and I jumped that wire, right? And my high side pressure is fine. It's beautiful. Nothing wrong with it. So that tells me that the switch went bad in the back of the compressor. Now, I don't know, maybe it's just my area, but I'm going to have to wait for a while for it to get here because for some reason, none of the auto parts stores anywhere around me even have that switch. So I just have it jumped, but I made sure that it was safe to do so because that switch cuts out at 430 PSI. Now, if you actually got a blockage, like let's say your um, orifice tube, which is down here in the high side line, let's just say that was plugged up and you jump that and let it run without having gauges on it and it was actually plugged, something in here is going to explode. You're either going to blow your compressor up or your line, or maybe you're going to blow the condenser out of here. Something is going to explode. So before you just go ahead and jump that and see if that's your problem, you need to make sure there's not some kind of restriction in the high side or else you're going to damage something and possibly hurt somebody. So also you need to replace that switch in the back with the same exact color. There's like seven different colors, maybe more, and you need to replace it with the exact same color because it's very specific to what it does. So that's also very important. But I just wanted to make this video to go over everything since people were kind of confused. Hopefully people will see this video if you're having troubles with your AC. It's a very simple system, but just running a jumper switch with a toggle on the dash, yeah, that's gonna make your compressor come on, but I wouldn't do that. I would just go ahead and fix it. So if you push the button on the dash and the light comes on, but nothing happens here, you need to check that first. Because like I said on the diagram here, you can see when you push that button, first thing that happens is it comes out here, goes right to this compressor switch, high pressure switch. And you know, we don't have to worry about checking fuses or seeing if there's any broken wires or anything because if this light lights up, well, it directly goes to this fuse right here. So we already know the power is good because it manages to light that light up. Then it leaves the high pressure switch and goes straight to the ECM right here. You know, see they list it as a signal, right? And um, yeah, so it's pretty simple. You got to have all these signals. The low pressure cycling switch, all that is is just 12 volts to ground. That other high pressure switch is just another, you know, 12 volts to ground. So pretty simple. Um, and if anybody else, you know, I didn't know this, but that switch back there that you think is the high pressure switch is actually, they call it a low pressure switch. It trips at like 320 or something PSI on the high side. And actually what it does is if, let's just say you're in traffic, it's 100 degrees outside and you got it on normal AC instead of recirculate, and your high side pressure gets way, you know, past 320 because it's so hot outside, if you trip that switch, <clears throat> what it'll do is it'll actually turn your AC on max recirculate for you automatically. So you don't even push the button. Now the light won't come on, but it's this button right here. You recirculate. And that's what the that's what will happen if you tri if you trip that switch that high pressure switch right there it'll just put your recirculate on <clears throat> to try to lower the system load so that's it that's all you got to do um, I wouldn't run any toggle switches I wouldn't put a jumper over there I really don't want to have a jumper over here but I couldn't uh, I can't get a switch right now and it's literally a hundred degrees during the day so uh, you know I want my AC but if you have any questions on anything just let me know I'll be happy to try to explain it